Good morning. Thank you all for that very warm welcome. As Beth said, my name is Nicole. I oversee the community programs and community team at Zendesk. So whatever kind of community you run, your community is there to serve one primary purpose, and that is for users to share their knowledge with one another. But I'm here today to talk about some of the roadblocks that we run into very frequently in communities around users being able to find that knowledge that they're trying to share with one another. In this session today, I'm going to go over three of those common roadblocks and how we are working to solve that at Zendesk by applying a methodology typically used in case resolution or ticketing systems to our community content. We'll go through what that methodology looks like, and then we'll talk about some ideas for how you can apply it to your community. So roadblock number one, user-generated titles. No matter how well-intentioned they are, our users are not typically thinking about search engine optimization or how other users might search for a similar question when they're filling out this required field to get their post up, right? This can look like a number of different things. One might be the entire question posted as the title. <laughs> or examples like these, one or two words that don't tell you, other users, or search engines really anything about what that post is about. We had a post in our community for a while, got thousands of hits every month. I was really excited to go find out what this great piece of content was. Its title, login page. <laughs> so clearly, users weren't finding this post because they too wanted to know how to customize the font color on their login page. They were just looking for the login page, and the title wasn't helping them get to where they needed to go. Similarly, Users are not always awesome at thinking about the format of their post, right? Does anybody else have a wall of text poster in their community? <laughs> yeah, or those people that will write 12 questions as one run long run-on sentence? Again, this isn't really very helpful for search engines, and it can be really cumbersome for other users to understand what the question is that they're looking at. The third and most common roadblock to users being able to find the information they're looking for actually happens in really well-engaged communities. And that is, users are going back and forth, and they're sharing their ideas, and the best answer is in comment number 13. <laughs> right? So there's a huge burden on the users to read through all of the comments and figure out which answer is the best. Now, some platforms are helpful in surfacing a best answer, either through dynamic voting or marking a best answer, but this still doesn't solve the problem when the answer is actually made up of multiple comments and bunches of users weighing in. So here's the solution that I propose. At Zendesk, we've been experimenting with implementing a knowledge-centered service, or KCS methodology, to our community content. Created by the Consortium for Service Innovation, KCS is a methodology for capturing and surfacing knowledge. It's most commonly applied in case resolution systems where an agent is capturing their answer and publishing it to a knowledge base. Before I get into what the exact principles and practices of this methodology are, I want to give you an example of a workflow so that you've got something concrete to think about as we go through those details. This flow is an example of how a KCS workflow works at Zendesk. Now, this is within our support organization, not within the community. So let's walk through it together. Our friend in green here has a question. And so what do they do when they have a question? They do what most of us do. They go to Google, and they search for it. But they don't find an answer. Maybe it's not available in our knowledge base, or maybe we haven't worded the title correctly. So they shoot off an email, and they open up a case with support. They go back and forth with the support agent, and the agent sends an answer to the user in the ticket. This is your typical closed loop support, right? It's a great experience for the user. They get personalized support. They get the answer they need. But it's not terribly efficient for the organization if that knowledge doesn't get captured. Because the next time a user has that same question, they're going to have to do that work all over again and answer it. So we took the principles of KCS, and we applied it to our workflow. We created an app that allows the agent to simultaneously send the answer to the user and publish it to the knowledge base. So now when other users, such as our friends in red here, have a similar question and they search, they're able to find that article, and they don't have to reach out to support at all. So I had my light bulb moment. Here I have this community where all of these users are generating all this great information that's really hard to find. 
And here I have this process in our ticketing system where agents can surface information and get it published to our knowledge base. Is there a way that we can take this process and this knowledge and bring them together, bringing our users into our official knowledge workflow? So we started running some experiments, and here's what that looks like in our community right now. Our friend in green is very inquisitive. They have another question. So they go to Google, they search, they don't find an answer. So they post it to our community. The community members swarm around the answer, and they come up with a response, and they post it in the comment thread. Then my team has now a new workflow that we've built in, where when we see that great interaction, we reuse that content and publish it to our official knowledge base. This enables us to clean up the title, to format it in a clear way, and make sure that the answer is surfaced right there in the body of the article so that other users can easily find it and so that search engines will crawl it and find it as well. Here's what that looks like in real life. So Virgil, one of the users in our community, posted a question. This was during one of our community AMAs, so we had a panel of special experts that were coming in and sharing their expertise and answers. After the AMA was over, we went through and we found all of the questions that we thought would be relevant to other users as well and republished them in our knowledge base. Again, cleaning up the title, cleaning up the format, and organizing the information effectively. It doesn't show on the screenshot here, but we also put a badge on there that calls out that this is user-generated content and linking back to the user's profile so other people can find that profile in our help center and go follow that user. We also then went back to the community conversation and said, hey, Virgil, thank you for your great question. We think lots of others are going to have this question as well. And so we've published this as an official article in our knowledge base. The result? Virgil was pretty happy. He was really excited. He felt really validated. He felt a great sense of belonging in our community because we said, your information's great. We're going to bring it in and show it to other people. And he's really excited, hoping that other users will be able to find this information helpful. So think about that for a minute. We've now found a way to expand our knowledge base, expand the diversity of contributors to that knowledge base, and recognize the contributions of our users. Not bad, huh? So let's dig into the principles and practices of KCS so that you can think about how you might be able to apply a similar kind of workflow in your community. These are the underlying principles of KCS. Think of these as the values that it's founded on. I really like these values because I feel like they fit really well with most of our community values. And we all know that a great community strategy starts with making sure you're clear on what your values are. So first and foremost, abundance. This is the idea that knowledge is not finite. Unlike other resources, the more you use it and the more you share it, the more of it you have. More your contributors equals richer and deeper knowledge. So clearly, bringing your community members into your knowledge workflow significantly expands the depth and the richness of the knowledge that you're sharing. This, of course, creates value, one for the users, because they're able to find information that they need quickly and easily, but also for your organization. It's an efficient way to expand your knowledge base. The whole process is demand-driven. So clearly, you can't apply this process to every single comment in your community. That'd be way too much information, and not all of it would be useful. But if you are guided by the questions that your users are asking and the interactions that they're having in your community, you know that you're surfacing the right information. And that's where trust comes in. You're trusting your users to point you in the right direction of the content that's going to be most useful to them. You also end up building trust with your users because you're responsive to their needs. So now we're going to get into the practices of KCS. Think of these as the tactics, the things that you actually do and implement in your workflow in order to make this all work. You've heard me use this phrase, reuse, a lot. The idea of reusing knowledge is sort of the fundamental basis of KCS. And this is the idea that you're saving time and you're making things more efficient by not having agents rework answers like we talked about. Now, especially in a community implementation, clearly permission and attribution are really important aspects of reusing knowledge. In fact, while the entire point of this whole idea is to surface knowledge, I think the greatest value of it in a community implementation is the recognition of your users. You saw that response that our community member had. When you implement a community with KCS, 
you start to see users engaging more, right? If they know that there's a chance that their stuff might get included in your knowledge base, they're going to be a lot more excited to share their best knowledge and maybe write it out really well and format it in a really good way. Recognizing your users as a part of your official workflow is one of the most significant things that you can do to call out their contributions. Think about it. They might even link to it on their LinkedIn or use this as evidence when they're asking for a promotion at work. Look at the great questions I can ask or look at the great knowledge that I have shared. It's so good that Zendesk recognized me for it. Now, who doesn't want their users to feel a great sense of value a great sense of belonging, and gain some professional and personal development just by participating in your community. Right? I think we all want that. Now, of course, before you can reuse knowledge, you have to capture it. This is not just simply capturing what the question is and capturing the answer, but what's really important in a KCS implementation is capturing the context of the information. And this is because Different users experience a problem with different symptoms. So say, for example, you have a community that's all about running. And uh, I'm going to make up an injury here. If there's runners in the room, you can tell me later if this is a real thing or not. Uh, but you've got a knowledge base article about how to recover from runner's knee. You've got three users in your community who are currently suffering from runner's knee, but they don't know that. Sam, when she goes running, feels an intense heat around her knee. When Joe goes running, he gets like a stabby pain under his kneecap. And when Dee goes running, they feel fine. But about an hour later, they start to get this dull ache in their leg. Now, none of them know that they've got runner's knee, so they each go to your knowledge base, and they search for these uh, symptoms that they have. But they don't find an article about it. Now. They go and post to the community. Their community members come in and say, oh, I know what that symptom is. It's runner's knee. You should look into it. Now, if you go through and then capture articles with each of these symptoms, right? capture the context that these users are searching on, the next time somebody feels a hot pain in their knee, or a stabby pain, or a dull ache, and they search for those symptoms, they'll be able to find an article. Now, that's a very simple example, but you can really see how this becomes important when you're dealing with something like a SaaS product, where there may be thousands of different symptoms of the same problem. It really helps your users to find the information they're looking for if you've captured the full context of the questions that people are asking. The other important piece here, as we've called out before, is the structure. What you want to do is develop a common format or template. This serves two purposes. One, it helps make your workflow really efficient. Now that you've got people doing additional work to capture this knowledge, you want to make it as quick and easy process as possible. So having a template will really help with that. And two, it helps organize the information in a way where users can predict where on the page they need to look to find the answer they're looking for. So you saw this in an earlier screenshot. This Q&A format is the most common one that we use at Zendesk. Now, we have a couple of other formats for things that are specific to our products, so things like recipes for reporting you would want to come up with formats that are relevant to the kind of content and kind of questions that your users are asking. So to review, we've covered the three primary roadblocks to users finding information in your community. User-generated titles, poorly formatted posts, and answers that are hard to find because they're buried in or spread across multiple comments. I've given you an example of what we're doing at Zendesk to try to solve this problem. And we've talked through the principles and practices of the basic KCS methodology. Now let's talk about how you could apply this to your community. Step one, you, of course, are going to need to figure out logistics. Who could do this publishing? Is it your community team? Do you have a documentation or other writing team that you can lean on? Maybe even your super users or community moderators could help you with writing some articles. It's also possible that you've got a development team that can help build you an app so that you can quickly and easily, with a click of a button and a few little edits, publish an article. Then you'll also need to figure out where you can republish this knowledge. If you've got a knowledge base, that's the obvious place to put it. If you don't, that's OK. Maybe you've got a blog that you could feature great user contributions and answers on. Maybe you've got social media channels that you could use to feature it. 
You could include it in a newsletter. Maybe it even just comes down to having a specialized topic within your community where you resurface reformatted and reused content. So now you've figured out who's going to do the work, and you've figured out where it's going to go. And the when kind of depends. We like to have one of our knowledge writers join us when we're having an AMA-style conversation and have them pull from information that way. Maybe you make it a weekly part of your schedule. From there, you have to plan your workflow. So you'll want to go through and look at the KCS principles and practices and figure out how you can apply them. It's important to use these because this is what makes it effective and makes it work in a seamless way. And then finally, you'll want to think about how you're going to recognize your contributors. So as I mentioned, we like to put a badge on the article and then go back and ping the users and make sure that they know that we've shared this. Uh, other things that you can do, if you have gamification, reputation scores, or badges in your community, maybe users can earn special points or a special reward for having knowledge that's so great that you've been able to reuse it for them. Maybe you can give them a shout out on your social media channels. Or if you've got a newsletter or some kind of digest, maybe you can call out users this way. Again, recognizing your contributors is going to be one of the most impactful and valuable parts of this. And once you've done all of this work and pulled this all together, you get to reap the benefits. So first and foremost, you should see improved self-service. You've got an expanded knowledge base. You've got information that's easier for users to find. They should be able to access it more quickly and easily and not need to call your support team. This also increases user satisfaction because they're getting exactly what they came for, the information that they're trying to find. And it'll increase user loyalty and engagement. You're calling out their contributions. You're recognizing them, and you're making them a part, not just of your community, but of your organization. The other point that I have, which isn't on the slide, is something that just occurred to me last night. We talk a lot about this conference, and I've heard over and over this week of how we're always trying to demonstrate ROI of our communities to our executives. How do we show them what our community's contributions are? Wouldn't it be great if six months from now, you could go to one of the executives at your company and say, we've increased our knowledge-based content by 30% completely using community contributions. That would be pretty exciting, wouldn't it? If you'd like to learn more, I highly encourage you to check out the Consortium for Service Innovations library. They have all of the information about KCS there. They are, in fact, a certifying body, so you can actually get a certification in KCS. And I'm always happy to answer questions. You can find me at Nicole and Madison on Twitter. Please feel free to email me, or I'll be around the rest of the day, and I'd be happy to answer questions. Thank you so much for your time and attention today.